let's install Linux on a MacBook Pro. This is specifically a 2019 Intel-based MacBook Pro with the T2 security chip. On both the Apple Silicon and the T2 MacBooks, the bootloader is unlocked, which means theoretically you can use any operating system you want, but because um, MacBooks are very much meant to run macOS, they use more specialized hardware, and so it's, it's not always an easy task getting compatibility. But my goal is to put Linux Mint on this machine. Um, I don't know if that's gonna work. So as a backup, we can do Ubuntu, but I would like to do Linux Mint. I've just factory reset it, so it's basically as if it were just taken out of the box. So first, we need to set up um, inside of macOS. But the reason I want to install Linux on it is because I'm going to um, use this as like a server because old laptops are great for servers. Um, I have an old laptop from like, I don't need a password. Oh, I do need a password, okay. I have a um, an old 2013 laptop that originally shipped with Windows 8, I think it was. And, you know, everyone loves Windows 8. Um, but it, it, it didn't run well. And like, I upgraded it to Windows 10 and it ran even worse. <laughs> and the battery was dead and it had like an, an, uh, it had a hard drive and so it was really slow. And so what I did is I, um, I swapped out the hard drive for an SSD, which helped a lot. And then I also installed Linux Mint on it. And, um, just as a day-to-day -day use computer, it is great, but I've been using it as a server for um, some self-hosted web services, and I love it. So I'm going to have this laptop join it, or maybe even replace it, um, as a server. And um, if you know anything about Linux, it's that um, <laughs> it's very popular in the server world. So a lot of, a lot of the things I'm running are, are going to be able, or at least way easier to set up on Ubuntu or Linux Mint, which is based on Ubuntu. Um, and that is why I'm going to be installing it on this MacBook. Okay, we're at the desktop. Wonderful. That was pretty fast. But we need, we do need macOS to set a few things up. So, I'm using this guide called um, T2 Linux Wiki. I'll have it linked. And this site has a bunch of really useful instructions on how to get Linux on a T2 laptop. And it even has some pre-built distributions that come with pre-installed stuff so that you don't need to um, set up a custom kernel and all this stuff you need all yourself. So we're gonna be using that as a fallback just in case this doesn't work. But theoretically, we should be able to just load up Linux Mint um, using a custom kernel, and then we can install it from there and then add everything else we might need after that. So the first thing we need to do is open up Disk Utility and uh, partition our disk. This laptop only has 128 gigabytes of space, which is extremely small. Um, it's not great, but uh, I just cleared it, so there's there's pretty much nothing. So we're gonna add a new partition. I really like the disk manager in macOS. I'll go ahead and make it like, mm, 90 gigabytes. Okay, so let's go ahead and name this. Linux. Uh, we want to format it. Um, well, it doesn't really matter what we format it because we're going to reformat it anyway. So we'll go ahead and apply partition. Um, that's fine. All right, now we wait. The next step is to get the ISO on a USB flash drive. I have already done that and I have it on a dongle. Now there is one thing that we still need to do. We need to copy the um, Wi-Fi firmware files and we can do that with 
a script. Okay, I'm gonna click here to download the script. Allow. Go ahead and, uh, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Open the terminal. Getting Wi Fi and Bluetooth firmware. And we are good to go. Okay, there's one more step we need to do before we can actually boot into Linux or into the installer, and that is to turn off Secure Boot. And hold Command R as we uh, re log. And now we're in the recovery environment. We're gonna go to Utilities, Startup Security Utility. Uh, we have to authenticate. And then we can just turn, it says secure boot to no security. I promise uh, we will be just fine. Okay, so now we can boot from the Linux ISO. So I'm gonna plug in the USB to the Mac. All right, and then we're gonna restart and hold the option key. And there we go. For some reason I have Windows. That's weird, but okay. <laughs> um, this is the one we want, the orange EFI boot. And we should boot into Ventoy and be able to select an ISO. Yeah, all right, I want Linux Mint 21.2. Boot in normal mode. Yeah, start Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon 64-bit. All right. Hey, there we go. Are we gonna... Oh, we have a cursor. And we are on the desktop, and the trackpad does not work. All right, um, well, this is progress, um, but I do not have a trackpad. Um, do I have a keyboard? No. All right, we're gonna need to use an external mouse and keyboard. Um, but we only have two USB ports, and one of them is connected to the USB, so... <sighs> Um, let me grab something for my next trick. Ooh, the light looks much better. This is a Thunderbolt 3 dock, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into here, and then I can plug in a keyboard and mouse, and then we'll, um, see if it works. I'm not entirely sure if this will work or not. Theoretically, it should be able to just act as a USB hub. We'll see. Okay, I heard a charge sound. Does the keyboard work? It appears not. Does the mouse work? It appears not. Okay. Um, that's disappointing. You know what? It just occurred to me that I heard the Mac, like, charging sound is the same as when you plug in an iPhone which means that sound must be hardware or something. That is quite strange. Anyways, I've got another USB um, adapter. So we're gonna unplug the dock, plug this in, and um, we're gonna plug in the keyboard. Okay, do we have a connection? We do, wonderful. Install Linux Mint. There we go. Um, let's install Multimedia Codex later. Where are you? That is not where I am. I am going to just roll with it and fix it when I have a trackpad. Uh, yep, that's fine. That's fine. Choose a password. I'm not going to choose a password for now. Oh, I guess I do have to choose a password. Okay. And there we go. We are copying files and properly installing this. Installation is complete. Let's go ahead and restart now. We are just fine. Welcome to Linux Mint. Awesome. Do we have trackpad? No, we don't. Nor keyboard. All right. Well, let's uh, continue with the USB keyboard. Now that I don't need this flash drive, I can plug in the mouse. Wow. Finally. Okay, we should have a mouse now. We do! Awesome! Nice! Okay, let's go. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and do a bit of... Inst we're offline. Oh, okay. Um, 
we don't have an internet connection. Let me go ahead and... Mm, no Wi-Fi. Alright, that's gonna be a problem. So I guess we are gonna have to get everything working before we continue on. Oh, we are gonna need to connect to the internet. That's gonna be a problem. Well, let's go ahead and try the dock again, because it does have an ethernet um, adapter in it. So maybe the dock will work now that we have it installed. It's charging, but we have no connection to the keyboard whatsoever. <sighs> cool. So apparently um, the dock just doesn't work USB-C only. It can charge, but there's no no data, which is a bit of a letdown uh, because I don't have any other possible ways to get this connected to the internet. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do is we have all sorts of problems. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this script downloaded and put onto the USB so that way I don't need to download it. Hey, we can do this offline. Maybe. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and plug this into here. I have the mouse. Nope, I have the keyboard still plugged in. So go ahead and go to files. Here we go. Unable to mount unknown file system. Hello, I have this USB connected. Can you please, uh, Read from the USB I just plugged in. Like, why? This is just working. Let's see. I need disks. What? Where is my USB? I just plugged this plugged into the other laptop, and it works just fine. Let's um restart it to Mac OS and see if we can copy the files from. Mac OS. I restarted, and there it is. I don't have a mouse. <laughs> no way. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. Okay. Install Linux headers first. Okay. Okay, this might work. <laughs> okay, and then we'll go ahead and install this one now. Okay. And now we restart. Theoretically, it should work. Check it out, we have a trackpad. We have a keyboard, no way. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh! Okay, do we have networking? No. We need to set up Wi-Fi, um, which we will do, but we have an input device! Oh, no more messing around with all the USB stuff. Oh my gosh, that's loud. Um, we have audio too, apparently. That's, that's good. That just works. Awesome. Audio is like, it always just is broken. But it just works. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and now set up Wi-Fi. Um, so we ran that script, what feels like forever ago, on macOS, and that basically just allows us to re retrieve the files. Um, and so we can just do sudo new mount. I I know. Just be patient. I'm working on it. Give me, give me a second. Slash temp slash Apple Wi-Fi EFI slash firmware dot sh, and that should just set it up. Keeping a copy of the firmware and the script in the EFI partition shall allow you to set up Wi-Fi in the future. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, just in case, might as well. Okay, wonderful. So now, hey, we have wireless. No way. All right, let me get onto a Wi-Fi network really quick here. The suspense, please just work. It failed, okay. 
Let's try the non-5G. <sighs> oh, please, you can list the networks, but you can't connect to one? Okay, well, it's not gonna be that easy, apparently. And now it's not giving me anything at all. Let me go ahead and restart. Okay, wait, we have Wi-Fi. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. We have to uh, install um, a thing to um, sudo apt install uh, IWD. This will give us some um, stable Wi-Fi. It says we have Wi-Fi, even though it says connection failed. So I assume we're good. Let's try going to the update manager. Actually, I'm not gonna do the update manager. I'm gonna sudo apt install Nala, just because it is easier and faster and better. So Nala is just basically a better front end for apt, and it's a little bit faster at doing things. So I prefer to use Nala. And then once I have that up, I can properly set up the update manager. Is this connection failed? But, oh, nope, now we're disconnected, okay. Oh wait, no, we have a few things that we need to do. In here, under device, I need to Wi-Fi dot backend equals IWD. Um, save, okay. Um, and then I need to do, oh, I can close this now sudo system ctl enable dash dash now iwd and then sudo system ctl restart network manager and now we should have some more stable wi-fi it does not seem to be working okay well it's not going anywhere so i'm gonna go ahead and restart this any time now I do not think it should be taking this long. I'm just gonna restart. All right, um, I went to go put some stuff away and it looks like um, it's successfully restarted. Wireless networks are listed. For some reason, Wired keeps trying to activate even though I don't have a wired connection. Let's try Wi-Fi. Who knew that the hardest part was gonna be Wi-Fi? Well, um, I'm just gonna let it sit for a bit. It has listed all of the uh, things, it's just... It seems to be stuck in the connecting phase. It's not failing, but it's not succeeding either, which is honestly less useful. Oh dear. Let's restart once again. Please. I would really appreciate it if uh, you could restart. That would be great. If you could restart, it's not gonna do it, is it? Some wireless is unavailable. I've let this go run on for a long time now. And it looks like IWD is completely locked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart again. I'm going to just remove IWD because clearly it is not working. Okay, well, I have network after uninstalling IWD. So apparently it only breaks everything. It doesn't seem to be actually fixing anything. So we are going to um, not use it. And we're just going to stick with bear network manager and not use IWD because it is only causing problems. Maybe it's trying to use the wire thing. Let's not use that. Hey, there we go. It was just trying to use the wired network. Okay. Cool. Now let's install Nala. Yes. Hey, 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 there we go. Oh, we're finally getting somewhere. Oh my gosh, I was dealing with that Wi-Fi stuff for like an hour. <laughs> okay, well, today we learned don't install uh, IWD because it just breaks everything. It does not fix. It only breaks. And it seems like we're having some... We're, we're, we seem to be having stable <laughs> Wi-Fi right now, so <laughs> I'm just not gonna touch it, I think is uh, 
is the uh, best idea. I don't know if you've heard about Nala before, um, but Nala is super great. It's um, basically just apt but better. So if I do sudo Nala fetch, we're going to uh, update our mirrors so that we can get some faster uh, packages. And we are done. These are the fastest mirrors. So then I can just choose the which ones I want. So I want to keep one, two, three, maybe. Oh, separated by spaces. One, two, three. There we go. Yes, those are good. And I can do Nala update. Oh, pseudo Nala update. And it'll go ahead and look at how much nicer it looks. That's beautiful. So then let's go ahead and upgrade. And so it's going to go ahead and upgrade all the packages. Um, yes, we will continue. Yes, I'm good with that. All right, there we go. Okay, so I've just finished all of the updating and installing the language packs and the multimedia stuff. The last thing I want to do, I want to install a package that will get the touch bar working. That's right, I did not forget about the touch bar. Um, so the package to get the touch bar working is called tinyDFR. So sudo nala install tinyDFR. That's DFE, but okay. tinyDFR not found. No, it's not found. Weird. Oh, it's because I need to add the repository, and I skipped that step because I didn't. Yeah, okay. So we need to do CURL. Actually, let me just open up Firefox and copy this because I can do that now. <laughs> and turn all this off. Wonderful. All right. We'll just go ahead and copy all of this. I'm using the command key. I need to use the control key. I did it again. Done. Sudo Nala update. And now we should have tiny DFR. We do, awesome, wonderful, and we're done. All right, I'll give it a quick restart and then we should have our touch bar working. Looks like we have our connection automatically this time. We have a full function row, look at that. We can go ahead and open up a terminal and we configure it with sudo touch bar. So we can set the mode. Um, right now it's on function keys. That's the wired network. Um, we can set it to media controls or media controls plus app shortcuts. Let's try media controls plus app shortcuts. Whoa, okay, interesting. We have app one, app two. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming we can set these. Um, and then we have a calendar. We can set the volume, hey, nice. And then we have media controls, we have a little arrow that doesn't seem to do anything. <laughs> okay, but this is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and set it back to function keys just because that's all I really need. Oh, I can set the media controls when the function key is pressed. Okay, so then when I press the function key, it changes. Okay, that's cool, awesome. Okay, so we have the keyboard, we have the trackpad, um, the display is fine, we have audio, we have networking, we have the touch bar. Fingerprint sensor is pretty much helpless because there's no way to tap into the actual T2 security chip, which is what contains the controller for the fingerprint sensor. Um, do we have Bluetooth? I assume we do. Oh yeah, we can enable Bluetooth. It's turned off right now, but um, I'm not gonna enable Bluetooth automatically because I don't need Bluetooth. But yeah, we have Bluetooth. So then the last thing I want to do is do a, a little bit of customization. And I think it is only fitting to make it look like Mac OS. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to the top. I'm gonna go ahead and sudo nala install plank. So plank is just a simple dock so that we can have apps in the dock. And then while that's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and find, um, what's it called, Whitesir. So I'll go ahead and download this. 
And then I'll also go ahead and get the icon theme. Download that as well. Um, we have Plank, so let me go ahead and launch that. And we have a dock now. Um, please, well, I guess judge me or don't judge me, whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the left side of my screen. All right, and then let's go to downloads. Let's go ahead and extract here and extract the other one here. There we go. GTK theme, open terminal, and then we'll just do dot slash install.sh. We'll go and run it as root so that we can have it in the root themes. Okay, and then I'll do dot slash tweaks dot sh. What do we have? Um, let's see, Firefox. We want to do Firefox. So that's dash F and then flat pack dash capital F and go. And there we go. All right, and then we'll go ahead and cd into the white sir icon theme dot slash install. And that's it. We'll go ahead and close that out. And obviously it doesn't look like it yet, but then we'll go into the um, system settings, themes, and advanced white sir light. There we go. And then let's do the white sir folders. White sir light. Hey, look at that. We are already quite far. Let me make sure that this thing uses that perfect. Um, and then let me get a cursor really quick. Ooh, look at Firefox. Download this, dot slash install, finished. And then we can go back into here. And white server cursors, there we go. Um, the buttons are on the wrong side of the screen, so let's go to Windows, put them on the left. They're still in the wrong order, and I'll fix that in just a moment. First, I want to go ahead and make this panel a little bit smaller, like 28 probably, and we're going to use a different icon. Um, here we go, start here, symbolic, Apple. Alright, and then to fix these buttons at the top, I'm going to go ahead and do Nala install deconf editor. Okay, and then let's open deconf editor. Okay, I'll be careful. Close. Oh, wait, here it is. This is the one. Close, maximize, minimize. This needs to be close, minimize, maximize. Hey, there we go. Now we have them in the right order. All right, last thing we need is a background change. And, um... Let's go with uh, Ventura Light, I guess. There we go. Sonoma Light. We're on Sonoma now. Whoops. And then check it out. We can even turn on the icon zoom if you're into that. I'm not. I'm going to turn it off. Oh, I almost forgot. While that's doing that, um, we should use a different font. <laughs> and then I'll just go through all these fonts and hit install. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and do SF Pro display regular and then same thing here and there we go now we're using the correct font i have installed the uh, nautilus file manager which sort of um resembles finder a little bit more than nemo does i don't prefer nautilus but um it does look a lot more like finder i've also um added Albert. So I really like the idea of Spotlight, and Albert is exactly that, but it's open source, it's compatible with lots of platforms. You can launch lots of applications, like, so I want to do celluloid, I can do that. It does math, like 5 times 76, and there it is. Um, I can put the computer to sleep, or it's called suspend, actually. And I haven't had any problems with the uh, network which I'm very happy about. 
everything looks beautifully sharp uh, at high DPI. Although I uh, do note that the scale is a little bit larger than you would have on a Mac. And so if you want, you can set it to 100% or maybe you could go like 150, 175, something like that. I'm gonna be using it for hosting things on my network. Alternatively, if you really wanted to, um, you know, Steam has um, the Proton compatibility layer. If you wanted to play Steam games on your T2 Intel-based Mac, you could. I know Linux Mint is much lighter than Windows. I'm not sure how it compares to Mac OS, but it is still going to be a fairly lightweight operating system. So it's not... Right now, we're at about just under two gigs of memory. This laptop only has eight. So having lower memory usage is definitely a plus. And then as for space, it only takes up, let's see, so far we've used 14 gigabytes. So there you go. It takes some setup, but um, Linux Mint on a T2 Mac. Obviously it's way easier if you just go with their um, pre-set up ISOs that you can just download and you only have to do a fraction of this setup. Anyways, that is all for now. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.